27. Get that, will you, Stephen? I'm an actor from Cabaret, and this evening I'll be playing Bernie. Frank! Frank! No, don't worry yourself. You all stay relaxed up there. I'll get it myself. Just excuse me for a moment. We'll just... Here it is now, the 20 minute play she wrote in two days. I say she's wet buckets over that, God love her. Yes. She came out here the other day asking me all sorts of questions. Very personal ones and very strange ones. I mean, I thought I knew what I was signing up for with this home theatre Ireland business, but I didn't expect this. What's the point of life anyway, Bernie, do you think? She'd be asking me, sitting there at the kitchen table, drinking black coffee and wearing black and saying, and are all love stories ultimately doomed? Is monogamy a realistic societal expectation? Can the sexual spark ever last? Well, that was when the alarm bells went off in my head, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure she's very talented and all, but chats about monogamy in my sex life? <laughs> That's not what I signed up for. But I'm not the kind of person who wants all my bits exposed. <laughs> <laughs> dirty laundry yet. I don't have much dirty laundry anyway. Do you know that every September I throw out all my underwear and socks <laughs> and I buy new sets of everything? And I told her that. She looked at me as though it was a very odd thing to do. <laughs> Later on, when I told her about Frank and I going on our first date to a horse slips gig and how he'd pick me up from school in his mother's mini at my school in Eckwood Street, I could tell they weren't the big dramatic thing she was hoping for. <laughs> well, she finished it because here it is. I suppose fair play to her, do you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't write a play. Know your strengths, that's what I always say. <laughs> well, all I had to do was open me front door and let us all in. That was my end of the bargain. Got Frank to whip up a few mojitos, I've gone mad for the cocktails lately, and then buy a few packets of biscuits. Nothing I wouldn't be doing on a normal Saturday, if I'm very honest. <laughs> She's got a fine though, isn't she? Only delivering the play a minute before the kickoff time. It's like Bernard Brogan. <laughs> oh God, I love Bernard Brogan. <laughs> <laughs> Sauntering into Grove Park a minute before the match starts on All Ireland final day. Not very professional, but I'm saying nothing. I, don't know. I had only one stipulation about this play. <laughs> I warned this Roisin one that she was to make it funny. And she said to me, Funny isn't as easy as it looks, Bernie. If it was as easy as it looks, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> Why do you think there are all those depressing books and plays and films in the world? And I said, look, I have all these people coming to my house, good friends of mine of long standing, Liz and her lovely pa, <laughs> Hazel, Kim, Mary, Mary, other Mary, Mary from the top of the lane, Mary Merriman, other Mary Merriman, Chris from two doors down, Laura from the top of the road, Antoinette from when I worked in Aer Lingus, and with the honesty, I mean, I've known some of these people since I was a teenager, and I don't want them going off all miserable afterwards. She said she'd see what she could do to, to make it funny, but I don't think she's capable. <laughs> I think she might have issues. <laughs> and when I see this now, this mortal coil, I'm telling you, I'm getting worried. It's not like I didn't give her any comedy material. I told her of a recent event over at Aqua Aerobics for at least one example. <laughs> <laughs> I love Aqua Aerobics. I love it because all the water 
kind of hides everything, <laughs> not like in other group activities such as walking or jogging or <laughs> normal aerobics. All that water kind of disguises the fact that you're putting your left leg where your right leg should be. I was doing my aqua aerobics this day beside this lovely woman with special needs or additional needs. I don't know the words to use these days. But I try to keep up because I like fairness and it doesn't cost anything to use the right words, even if you're not sure why the other words are wrong. So I'm there this day anyway, and the lovely this lovely woman, she has false teeth. And they fall out of her mouth and into the pool. Now I try to get the attention of her carer who's above on the benches. But she hasn't seen the teeth incident happen because she's very busy on her phone. Which I'm very annoyed about because I'm just uh, very annoyed about what I'm saying nothing. Anyway, we're jigging away to the music, and a few of us around this woman are tr around this woman are trying to find her teeth at the bottom of the pool. And what? Drama. Without drawing any unnecessary attention uh, or letting the teacher know what's going on, we don't want to embarrass the woman. The woman with the false teeth, mind you, she doesn't care. <laughs> She's happy enough doing our aqua aerobics, nashers or no nashers. <laughs> but me and my friends are on a mission because looking at her waggling herself around the pool with no teeth, with a, with a toothless smile is very off-putting. And it's hard enough trying to keep up with the moves. Now, I'm very proud of myself that I was the one to get to the bottom of the pool, hook her teeth onto my big toe, <laughs> leg as gracefully as you like and pop our falsies back in our mouth. <laughs> I had a funny feeling the false teeth didn't end up in here. This mortal coil. I know, I know it's from Hamlet which is actually on in the gate in town at the moment starring Ruth Penega. It's three and a half hours long so aren't you all very lucky that Johnny have to sit here 20 minutes of it? <laughs> Mortal coil. Sounds so grim. Do you know what? I don't even want to read it. Oh God. I think what's happened here is she's picked up on the fact that I turned 60 in December. <laughs> I could see her ears prick up when I was telling her about my big birthday bucket list. And now that I think of it, she started asking me like, what's the worst thing that's ever happened to you? And what was my biggest fear? <laughs> I didn't really answer, mostly because I couldn't think of anything dark enough for her, so God only knows what she's after making up and putting in there. <laughs> Look, I'll read it in a minute. I will, I have to. I don't know why I signed up for this play anyway. The organisers sort of gently led us into it. Gradually, over a few weeks, they explained the story that we'd be matched with a writer and then the writer would come to our house, get to know us a bit, and then they'd go off and write a play in two days, sort of inspired by us, and then the play would be performed in our houses, and sure, that's why we're all here, isn't it? But I don't want to do this if it's gonna make you all want to slit your wrists afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Frank's mortified by all of this, needless to say. <laughs> why I'm doing it. We're married 36 years and we're together as a couple over 40 years. We were just two kids when we fell for each other. Two infatuated kids. Teenagers. I used to sit at home and wait for the phone to ring and when he'd call me mouth was torn to cotton wool I could hardly speak. <laughs> over 40 years and it just seems like five minutes ago do you know what I mean? We've three grown-up sons now. Two of them live with us, but they have their own lives and the eldest is just about to get married. And I don't know, it just got me thinking. He thinks I'm mad. I know some of you think I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> what am I? It's just, when you, when you get a bit older, it's like a little timer goes off inside you, like the one on countdown off the telly when they're doing the big conundrum at the end. <laughs> You don't think about it every day, but it's sort of like a gentle nagging sensation, kind of like you're inside one of those egg timer yolks, the sand is running down, and you're not exactly panicking, but you can't help noticing that you're starting to run out of time. 
I started thinking funny things like, do I want to be off in a nursing home somewhere, drooling on a rocking chair, thinking <laughs> of all the things I could have done, should have done. It's why I started writing my big birthday bucket list in the first place. There's things on it like, I don't know, get new glasses, <laughs> clean the attic. <laughs> now, you're one Roisin, the writer person. She said to me when I told her that, if you don't mind me saying, Bernie, that's not a bucket list. <laughs> it's a to-do list. <laughs> but it's all the things I want to do before I kick the bucket, and I don't care. I want to die with a clean attic. I do. <laughs> Now, let me have a look at it now. Right. Afternoon tea in the Marine Hotel. Go on a long train journey where you sleep on the train through the Rockies or somewhere. Finish me family tree. Get a makeover. Electric picnic was on the list. Tick. I did that. Don't look so surprised. <laughs> I went with Friends of the Earth. I did my research as usual, had an A list and a B list of all the gigs and things I wanted to see, and I laminated it. Now, of course, some of the younger ones were laughing at me with me laminated lists, but they weren't laughing when I'd seen all the things I wanted to see, including Narls Barkley and a circus contortionist who could fit his whole body through a tennis racket. And they'd missed half the things they wanted to see due to lack of planning. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't laughing at me then. Also on my book at list, check all the bits. All of the bits. Like a full top to toe bodily MCT. Eyes checked. Tick. Ears checked. Tick. Downstairs area checked. That wasn't a straightforward tick. <laughs> <laughs> this mortal coil. I'm after having an idea now. This is a bit bold to me, but um. I'm going to tell you the other story. <laughs> and if anyone asks, you can say, yes, that play on the black row was very dramatic indeed. A story of one woman's search for meaning in a humdrum suburban room in D15 and all that. Nobody will ever know. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the Marina Club? <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Huge box. <laughs> yeah, a very big box, that's right. 
which I never even opened because mm-hmm. I didn't need to. I just brought it into the hospital with me for the procedure and they put me under. They did a bit of clearing out of my system <laughs> and then they popped the marina cardio yoga mm-hmm. in there. Bye bye heavy periods. Bye bye periods generally. <laughs> Best thing ever. <laughs> Life went on. But a few, you can't keep a cold in there forever. So a few years later, <laughs> I made an appointment with the GP to get it taken out. It, it went in easy, so you'd expect it to come out the same way. <laughs> but she had to poke in around there for, to know about. So she sent me off to James's A&E. <laughs> Have you ever been to James's A&E? <laughs> Right? 
Mm-hmm. So you all know well what that's like. So you know what I mean when I tell you that this was worse than having a baby. <laughs> and I just I cannot tell you how horrific it was. Anybody that's out with me now? <laughs> <laughs> and to keep you up to speed with my gynecological issues, I'm not sure if I've been through the menopause. <laughs> Because how do you know? Nobody really explains it. It's the great big menopausal mystery. Me hair, I, all I do know is that I have menopausal hair. It went all uncontrollable overnight when it used to be all silky, straight and shiny. And I have a cow's lick now, which I never had before. <laughs> Not down there now. Up <laughs> here. On me head. And I'm sorry. If some of you think that these things should be kept private and we shouldn't talk about them, but these things happen to women and there's nothing wrong with us talking about them sometimes. Do you know what? My nearly 60 life crisis, if you can call it that, is no big countdown conundrum. It's pretty straightforward. I just want to experience things. I don't want to be off in some nursing home somewhere drooling in years to come thinking, ah, Bernie. You never made it to the Titanic Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> or learned how to make a proper apple tart like the one Daddy used to make for our coffee mornings. Or visited those glorious gardens at Hampton Court or saw Rod Stewart live. My biggest fear is sitting on that couch and watching Coronation Street five nights a week for the rest of my mortal life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, now Coronation, Coronation Street has got a bit better, went through a terrible slump there for a while. It has picked back up again. I'm gonna do stuff. Go on the Viking Splash. Have a pint of Guinness at the top of the storehouse. Eat strawberries and cream in Wimbledon. Go on. I'm going to learn how to do my makeup properly and finally find out what the hell contouring means. <laughs> I'm going to do every single one of the things on this list. And if Frank or the boys or my friends want to do them with me, then great. Fantastic. And if they don't, well then I'll just go off and do them on my own. Right. <clears throat> We better open up this mortal coil and see what she has in store for us. It's not there. Not a word. In the end, she bottled it. I feel a bit sorry for her now. I can't say I'm surprised, really. Uh, from the start, I really didn't think she was the right person for the job. <laughs> know your strengths, that's what I always say. <laughs> it's actually a relief. I really didn't like the idea of all my bits being exposed to the world. <laughs> everyone knows I'm not that kind of woman. <laughs> 